Shalom, shalom. This is your boy, your friend, your brother, Frenchie, the West African Yashara. Today's topic, or should I say, to, the le- to this lesson in investigation, it's going to be about my own tribe. Yeah, West Africa, my own tribe. Yeah, which is known by the name of Crew, or should I say, a crime. Yeah. Or Gary, you have many names, but it's all the same people. Basically. Yeah, so this tribe is living in Liberia in Africa. Yeah, and those who know me, I always like to reclaim the true heritage of the Negroes all around the world. Yeah, this is this heritage has been stripped away from us, stolen from us by a group of people. Time for us to reclaim our true identity, which is being the biblical people, the true people, the Israelites. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do is lay out evidence and everything I can to, uh, to, to prove that my tribe is indeed coming from Israel. Also, certain tribes in Central Africa are uh, originally from Israel. People would, people would speak about it in their own oral history. And uh, in, 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 they speak about it even in the school system sometimes in Africa. Okay? A lot of things have been changed since the European name came down in Africa. Um, before the place that you call Israel was not called. Um, Middle East, that was a part of Africa. There was North East Africa, yeah. But nowadays, because people see fair skin complexion people or white people over there, they be thinking that that's, that's the people always been there like this, when it's not even true, yeah. But anyway, also another thing, yeah, I will prove that my tribe is the North tribe of Israel, yeah. killing. The full doctrine of the tribe, tribe chalk. So follow me in this plot, plot and take stay tuned with me. Okay, let's go and do it. So we're gonna start with this. And I hope y'all ready because it's gonna be a lot of reading. <laughs> yeah, a lot of reading, so yeah. So let's do it. Uh, the creepy the crew people African sailors tribe that refused to be captured into slavery. The crew people inhabited the homeland of in coastal southern Liberia and neighboring Cote d'Ivoire uh, or Ivory Coast. Uh, some crew have also migrated to neighboring Sierra Leone to work as fishermen and dock workers. The crew, along with the Gribo, resisted Maryland settlers' effort to control the, their trade. They were also infamous among the early European slave raiders as being especially adverse to capture. Mm, interesting. Their reputation was such that their value as slaves was less than that of other African people. Because they would so frequently attempt to escape or take their own lives upon being captured. Mm. So we're learning a lot. Yeah, we're learning a lot. Another thing. Um, Linguists use the name crew to refer to a linguistic group within the larger, larger Niger Congo language family. Peoples speaking language in this crew group include the Bete, the Dida, the Gribo, Wobe, this is my tribe. Oh, should I say my dad's tribe? <laughs> and the crew people themselves. So basically what you got to understand is like crew is not only one, one tribe, especially like there is crew, but it's more of a speaking people, like a language speaking people, should I say. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. Uh, the crew languages belong to the Niger Congo language family and are spoken by the crew people from the southeast of Liberia to the east of Ivory Coast. The term crew is of unknown origin. Hmm. <laughs> According to Western men, 
1952, it was used by Europeans to denote a number of tribes speaking related dialects. Mm -hmm, interesting. Um, 1986, notes that a uh, fact that many of these people were recruited as crew by European seafarers. The homonym name with crew is obvious in, sorry, in is at least one source of confusion among Europeans that there was a crew or crew tribe. Uh, Andrew, Andrew uh, Dolby, Dolby noted uh, the historical importance of the crew languages for their positions at the crossroad of African-European inter interaction and wrote that crew and associated languages were among the first to be encount encountered by European voyager on what was then known. So, I'm doing this to get you familiar with, the, with, with my tribe. So basically, the reason why I'm doing this is to make you understand when you hear crew sometimes, it can refer to their own tribe or also to the uh, language-speaking people. See what I'm saying? So you're not going to get confused. We're doing a little investigation. We need to know who are those people <laughs> yeah, before we can just do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to know these kind of things. Yeah. Uh, I hope I wasn't really too f was I wasn't too fast for you, yeah. So we're gonna keep going with more information so we can get familiar with those people, yeah. Yeah, I also wanted to show you a little map of every coast. I don't have a map of Liberia, but you may think that if the neighboring, if the crew people neighboring Africa was in Liberia, you may think that they're on the same side, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, the green part that you see, yeah, this is the crew speaking people. So you have the Weg Gere, yeah, this is my basically my tribe, the crown, yeah, and then you have the crude selves, you have um, the Bete, the Dida, and many others, yeah, all that make up the, um, the crew speaking people. Basically, this is why you have them in, in um, in green. So just to remind you, this is a ethnical or uh, ethnic map of of Ivory Coast. Yeah, so you will see speaks group of different speaking people, like languages. Sorry, <laughs> different language speaking people um, on this map, and the ones that you see crossed in red as well are also Israelites. So as you can see on the left hand side of there, you see the Dan Yakuba. Yeah, they're the tribe of Dan. Yes, they are the tribe of Dan. They came from Ethiopia. Yeah, there's even documentary about it. I will, uh, I, 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 I'm actually going to do a little um, document documentary on it. When well, I'm going to expose the 12 chart charts. <laughs> yeah, and on the... Right inside in blue, yeah, you see, um, you will see Baule people, Ani, yeah, Abrié and all that. That's uh, the Aka and the Avron as well. That's the 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 um, Akan people, people, speaking people. Sorry, yeah, uh, they neighboring um Ghana and also, if I'm not wrong, a lot of people in Ghana speak the same language as them. I think the Ashanti speak the same language, language as them, if I'm not wrong. They all, I can speak of speaking people. Yeah. And yes, they are Israelites. You can even go check it up on, on your Bible or internet. I can't, is a, is in the Bible. Yeah. So these people are not going to have this name and they're not, they're not Israelites. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, the demography of Africa is very interesting. Yeah. But just keep in mind that crew people are in green. Yeah, just to get your familiar with the people. So as I was saying before, you may see different names, but they basically uh, speak about the same kind of people, if I can say it like that, or or um, people that speak the same language, basically. So we're going to speak of the Kran right now. The Kran is also crew or a part of the crew language, basically. Is basically my tribe, yeah. You have different names, don't worry, I don't want you to get lost. So, you're gonna carry on. The Kran 
arrived in the area known as Liberia, previously known as the Green Coast, as part of the early 16th century migration from the northeast and what is now the Ivory Coast. The migration occurred due to pressure on local populations resulting from an immigration of Western Sudan tribes, so keep Western Sudan on mind, please. After the decline of the medieval empires, as well as an increase in regional uh, tribal wars, during the time frame, the African slave trade was was uh, be becoming sorry more prominent within Liberia. Or through some cruel tribes faced capture by Westerners, it was more common for for the Crown and other coastal people in Liberia to serve as local traders, brokering deal with the Western slave market. I do not take everything, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Wikipedia says for granted, but anyway, the crew were so opposed to slavery within their own tribe members that many committed suicide rather than face enslavement, yeah? So, when you see crime, also crime is basically a part of cruel language or cruel speaking people, so sometimes you're going you're gonna to hear the same stories about people, you know what I'm saying? You will see crying and they will say cruel and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's very confusing. But basically, they speak on the same people. Yeah. Once again, I do not take uh, everything uh, Wikipedia said for granted. But they have some good information. So as I was saying, keep the Western Sudan on mind as well. As they're going to go forth in this, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this investigation. Yeah. Because it's a key word and a key, major key information for us to understand where the crew or the crime or whatever they're going to call them comes from. Yeah. Very, very important. Very important. And as we're going to go forth, I'll lay out more evidence and I'll, I will explain even more in detail. You know what I mean? So I showed you a little bit about the crown and remember what he was saying about they come from the the um, they came from the the western sudan as the decline of uh the the empire yeah and we're gonna read a little bit about it the reason why many tribes come from the western sudan yeah and that's the reason why so we we are in the western african history book uh volume one by Robert uh, O. Collins, a very interesting book, a very nice book. <laughs> I highly recommend people to go read it. So let's read. Uh, the Collapse of the Songhai, or Songhai, whatever you want to call it, yeah? So, let's read. In the 1578, Hamad al-Mansur, the Sadian Sultan of Morocco, Morocco, turned his ambitions southwards and prepared an army to seize the Western Sudan. Mm -hmm, you see, uh, from which came the gold of Africa. By nineteen, by fifteen nineties, the American armies was already and under Judah Pasha left Marrakesh on October sixteenth. Three months later, the Judar, late Judar and his troops arrived at Karabara on the Niger. Yeah, so <clears throat> if you go up a bit more, you'll see, I, yeah, it speaks of Songhe and American invasions. So I just wanted to show you that a little bit for you to understand the reason why. Yeah, and now lo located why, yeah, the crew or crime came from the Western Sudan. It was because of the invasion of the um, Moroccan, Moroccans, um, and they were trying to push Islam, basically. Uh, or should I say, they were trying to expand <laughs> Islam throughout West Africa, yeah? So... Now we understand why we got the cruel crime coming down to the west coast of Africa. Yeah, they were fleeing from the attacks of uh, the Muslims, basically. Yeah. Okay, now we have enough information. Yeah, for our investigation, we're going to focus on the legend, the legends that surrounded the cruel people. Yeah. 
So let's do it this one. Yeah. The original crew people are still historically unknown. The legend as if they migrated from the sea to the current habitat. Yeah. Uh, historian this these quite speaking related but distinct culture were all lumped together under the collective term crew. A corruption of the original crow by Europeans with whom they traded as far as I think is the 16th century or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So, <clears throat> um, if we are to believe the legend of the crew, yeah, Africa is surrounded by Mediterranean Sea to the north, uh, both the Suez Canal and the Red Sea along the uh, Sinai Peninsula uh, to the northeast in the Indian Ocean to the east and southeast in the Atlantic Ocean. So, if we are to believe that, I would be thinking that they must have across the Red Sea. And believe me, they're not the only African tribe to saying that they crossed the Red Sea. They're not especially saying that they crossed the Red Sea, but if you know about legends and everything, yeah. It's more, uh, it makes more sense for them to have crossed the Red Sea. But let's read this one as well. Uh, the third group of people who arrived in the, and settled in the region, which is n now known as Liberia, migrated to this part of West Africa quite recently. They were the crew, Basa, Die, Mamba, and Gribo tribe. So most of these people that you see are named are actually. Um, called crew not all of them but most of them i think the crew in the grebo yeah they all lumped together when it turned through okay and they came from what is now the republic of Ivory coast mm. interesting and it, it gets a little confusing now check this out uh population pressure due to the mass uh, immigration of tribes from western sudan again you see uh second website is still hearing the same thing Whereas the medieval empire has declined after their conquest by the Moroccan army, you see. So books and different uh, websites all say the same thing. And has resulted in tribal war. The crew arrived in the early 16th century. They came by sea again and did later a part of the Gribo. Yeah, so again, 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 the story of sea. Yeah, I only see one sea that makes more sense for me is the Red Sea. Yeah. Uh, even the Lemba did the same. Basically, they crossed the Red Sea as they say in their oral history. See? And legend, as they call it, legend is also oral history. You know what I'm saying? So, we need to take these things in consideration. It was very, very, very confusing for me. At the beginning, but it makes more sense. Yeah. Believe me. Because as you can see, they're saying the same thing that they crossed the Red Sea and made their way to Africa. It's talking about the Lemba right now, but the crew are basically saying the same. So now I'm in the Hebrewism of West Africa. Yeah, by Joseph J. Williams. Yeah, and you see the story of sea, Red Sea, and everything crossing the sea and all that. Yeah, that what the crew says. We need to take that serious because it's gonna make more sense when you're gonna read this one. Yeah. So, uh, an occasional brethren of the head extends as far the as far west as the crew and the Vai, and even among the Ashanti. Among the latter is distinct proportion of short people, notwithstanding their mean high stature. They are also more downy, and there is a tendency to extreme platyrine, plat, uh, platyrine. I don't even know that word. <laughs> the first time I hear that word. Um, uh, the the broad-headed uh, type thus extends from the western and eastern sudan again you see the sudan everywhere yeah but as we're gonna get uh further in this investigation we're gonna understand right across the continent but it rarely appears in a pure condition 
Its origin is doubtful, but possibly it may represent a old migration from Southern Arabia. You see? In South Wales, a migration from the Central Sudan zone have brought in, brought in uh, the head of various people in the several part of the Great Congo area. So you see the crew? Yeah, right there. Southern Arabia. Remember, according to the legend of the, the, um, should I say the so-called legend of the, the crew, they say that they, they may have crossed the sea, basically. Yeah? And only two seas. <laughs> around Africa, yeah, Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. We know they ain't coming from the Mediterranean Sea because that's Europe over there. Don't try, do not. It don't make sense, yeah. And if you see that, maybe this brother the brother the head, yeah, is a means that represent an old migration from Southern Arabia, yeah. What is in Southern Arabia? Yeah, in between Arabia, <laughs> the Red Sea. You know, in Africa is the Red Sea. You see what I mean? So it makes it makes more sense now. We have even more clue about this migration now. See what I'm saying? Yeah, we are actually trying to prove that the crew people came from Israel. See what I mean? Yeah. And also, I recover this in more details when I'm gonna do um the twelve chart chart exposed. So you, you're gonna deep you're gonna dig even more deeper. You know what I'm saying? But for now. Just keep that on mind, yes, yeah, Southern Arabia, yes. Yeah. So it's not normal that I read different books and I get this, I, I get the same information. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like it's either I'm tripping or it makes really, really, really sense. Now nah, it makes more sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, let's go further in that, and you're gonna see book. Yeah. Um, from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf Windsor, yeah, a very known book, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the including the Black Hebrews, yeah. That's what we're trying to prove today, yeah. We're gonna read a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Let's check this one. So we're in page eighty-eight, yeah. Uh, when North and Eastern. Africa had amassed over a million Jews. Mm. These Jews began a big, sorry, big, began a continuous migration to the region of Niger River. So basically, West Africa. Yeah, you're gonna jump down a little bit and get more. Yeah, uh, Jews of Arabia continued migration across the Red Sea. Uh -huh. <laughs> to Ethiopia. Mm. The largest exodus of Jews occurred during uh, the persecution by the Arabs, you see, led by Muhammad. These Arabs were on their asses all the way to, <laughs> to these Edomites. <laughs> yeah, the real Edomites yeah, were on us like real talk. Yeah. Um... I'm going to jump down a little bit. There is, there was a Jewish tribe called Rechab, which crossed the Red Sea, migrated to the extreme point of Western Sudan. That's, that's like five, seven times we hear in Sudan, Sudan, Sudan. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, so we need to to very very pay attention to these kind of details yeah i've i i got i, I went to like three different books yeah and i'm hearing sudan 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 you see what i mean so something is not right <laughs> you know what i mean um and as we're going to go forth you're going to understand a bit more yeah so we got the crew people yeah migrated from Basically from South Arabia, yeah, or across the Red Sea. We got a tribe of Jews that that are across the Red Sea. Yeah, that used to be that was um chased by the Arabs. The crew people was chased by the Arabs as well. Yeah. So it started making more sense now. It started making more sense. Yeah. But we need more proof, we need more evidence. Let's do it. 
so where have we learned so far yeah so one learn by the name of the people and that they they, 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 they can refer to the to, to people that speak the same language yeah there's many tribes within the the crew speaking language yeah we've seen uh the demographic card the map of um of uh two people as well within Ivory Coast, you know what I'm saying, uh, we, we check by the history, kind of, we know why they've been through a little bit, yeah, we've checked um, their migrations and their legends and everything, you know what I'm saying, and we've realized that uh, there's connections between books about, between the Jews and the migration of the uh, crew people, yeah? Chick, uh, kid builds things on mine is very important because as we're moving in, in this in this investigation, yeah. Uh, we need to make sure that we remember everything. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm talking to you like you're doing this thing, this thing with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Taking this thing very serious, yeah. And I really want people to understand and follow me in this walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, if anything wrong, we, uh, you can rewind and everything. You know what I'm saying? Feel free. Yeah, but I really want you to follow me in this walk. Yeah, it's very important to keep in mind and to understand. So when I'm gonna lay out evidences and everything in in um in in future future uh, uh documentaries and everything, you would understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So one thing, you know, they, we know the crew people uh, migrated uh, to where they are now in West Coast Africa and they migrated basically from the Red Sea so we have more clue now thinking that they may be from Israel you know what I'm saying even though I know they are from Israel but you know saying <laughs> yeah to keep the suspense <laughs> yeah but uh, let's keep it moving let's see what we can we're gonna discover yeah all right so this is like a official doc document basically right there yeah, it comes from Rebel News Network, uh, GNN, Liberia. So, this is obviously basically over there in Liberia, yeah? So, it's not no BS, basically. You know what I'm saying? Maybe for you, it might be BS, yeah? But uh, for us, it's not BS, yeah? All right, so a brief history on the House of uh, Nyan Royal Dynasty of the Kran. See, remember my tribe is Kran, yeah? Kran crew, basically the same, yeah? Um, Kran ethnic group. Of Liberia, based on a request made by uh, compatriot Charles uh, E. Uh, whatever you know, what I'm saying everything. Yeah. So we know that this guy is doing the research. He has been. I've I've done the research basically. Yeah. Uh, let's read a bit more. My motivation for writing, uh, for writing this short historical narrative, I feel uh, elated and honored to positively respond. To the request of Mr. Chuck E. King, because very seldom do librarians seek self knowledge or information about their blessed heritage that the Lord has so graciously and righteously um, endured upon li all librarians. The Israelite of Africa, in particular, I'm gonna repeat again the Israelite of Africa, in particular, yeah, mm. <laughs> and the black race in general, and therefore. There is a reason to rejoice when one of us, through divine inspiration and, and out of sheer uh, inquisitiveness, request in a friendly and respectful manner to learn about the, the, the buried golden royal and political past of Liberia and Africa. Respectively, <coughs> respectively sorry. I pray uh, fervently that many of you young Liberians, African and student, student of history and culture will uh, emulate the fine example of my illustrious um, friend and brother to seek wisdom and knowledge whenever the opportunity avails itself to you because teaching and learning are ending, sorry, an ending, an ending, an ending, and and integral process of life sorry about it yeah so 
that was a request from somebody, basically, because a lot of people want to know about royalty in Africa, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they want you to, they want they want people to give more details on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this guy had a request from somebody, and then he, he, he did his own research and everything for, for the person, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's very important as well to know about royalty in Africa and uh, how the the Ariel key of royalty worked in Africa, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, let's go forth. Yeah, so a uh, special notation about the Crown Manua uh quality research study. Uh note that given that most of our our information was based on an oral tradition and not on written recorded recorded history by my research participants were not too sure of the actual date that the Nain dynasty came into existence. However, there was a general uh, consensus um, among the participants as to when the reign of the Nain dynasty ended because almost all the participants saw and remembered that last Nayan king, by the way, Jayla, uh, sorry, and witnessed the inception of the expansion of Moravian government authority in what was then called Eastern uh, Province, now comprising, comprising um, Grand Gede and River Gi counties. Also, please be informed that the finding of the crime manual research have not been published because of lack of funds to travel to areas in Eastern, Central, and Southern Africa where research participants said that the crime people originate, originated. Yeah? So, once again, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's giving you more information now, and he wants to make he wants to make to learn, to understand that uh, most of the things that like how we know history basically in Africa most of the time is by it's very especially ancient history. It's more by oral 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 um history basically. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, African have. They don't really have like at one at one point they don't really have um uh written records, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that is very, 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 very um unfortunate. But all through we can still have trace of our our, our past, you know what I'm saying? People can th- keep things on mind, it's not something crazy, you know what I'm saying? As long as you teach the right thing to the to, to, to your to the next generation, they remember, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Also, it takes it, it takes place to another thing. People will call those kind of things legends. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, <laughs> we know what's the truth anyway. Yeah. So let's go further. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> the crime genealogic system. Um, one great cultural pr- practice that crime ancestors passed on to succeeding generations of crime uh, priors to reaching the promised land. Uh, the say Liberia is the crime genealogy system. The system categorizes every crime person into specific traditional household based on the person's family genealogy or family tree. Mm. As traditional African Jews, the crime were able to maintain and preserve the history and name of their various households and clan over the centuries. Yeah, so I'm going to read again. As traditional African Jews, the crime were able to maintain and preserve the history and name of various households and clans over, over the centuries. So, that's the reason why I can find Hebrew names in my family. Yeah? Because I've done a whole video on that. Yeah, if you go check my, check, check, check my, my other videos, yeah, my other videos... I don't know a whole video on that, speaking about the fact that people in my family have Hebrew names. 
You know what I'm saying? So that makes more sense now. And also the reason why my mom can tell you the name of her great, 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 great grandfather. You know what I'm saying? So I never realized that, but today it makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. So based on this, uh, let's, keep, let's keep going. Based on the, on the family genealogy system, it is very easy to trace ancestral heritage of anyone who claims to be a crime man or woman and to determine who their blood or distance or relative are as descendants of the same patriarchy or hegemony. Uh, let's keep going. For an example, the Chen Kran subgroup has two distinctive clans, the Chen Menyan and the Chen Menzon clan, clans. All Chen families fall within either one of these two clans and this was also how they interact uh, with one another from the beginning of creation up to present. The other crime section link like uh, the Grobo, Grabo, uh, yeah, or Konobo practice the same genealogic system. So it's the same thing everywhere. That's the reason why my tribe does the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <clears throat> so very, very interesting indeed, you know what I'm saying? And then it goes on, speaks about um, other uh, uh, black black kingdom of Africa, you know what I'm saying? Um, as to make you understand, um, there are different dynasties of people, you know what I'm saying, in Africa, yeah. Um, in addition, while discussing the history of the house of the Nyan royal, royal, royal dynasty of current ethnic group of Liberia as the foundation of our conversation, it is as well um, expedient to reflect on the historical periods and existence of other previous African dynasties and kingdom because the current society is a subset of the Qua ethnic group of Africa, and consequently, an odd reflection of half shot of pre existence African dynasties and kingdom of Kemet. Yeah, so they give you a uh, new Kemet, Kush, Haksum, uh, Nubia, Ghana, Sangai, Sang or Sangay, if you want to call it like that, uh, Mali, etc. Yeah, these ancient African kingdoms and dynasties precedes. Nine dynasty of current ethnic, ethnic group of Liberia that lasted roughly 200 years or more years, um, late 17th centuries, if not, yeah, 17th, 17th centuries, yeah, and 20th centuries, yeah. So, <clears throat> very, 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 very interesting indeed. So, we learning more now, and we actually had, um, more proof, yeah, that the crime people or the crew people are basically Jews. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The guy explained quickly that it was a Jew. Yeah. So you are if you're a Negro and so am I. So as we're going forth in this investigation, yeah, I want to speak about uh, the Ija people, the Ija people from Nigeria. Yeah, uh, cause because the crew people are very related to the Ijo people of Nigeria. We even have like kind of similar names and all that. That's in the, that's that's not what I'm going to recover today. Yeah, but we're going to read a little bit about, about them. So the Ijo people, earliest inhabitants in the south of Nigeria. Yeah, Ijo also known by the sub. Groups of Ijo or Izion or Izion or Izon, yeah, are a collection of indigenous people, mostly of the forest region of the Beza Beza sorry, Delta and the rivers states within the Niger Delta in Nigeria. Some are native of Aqua Imbom. Edo and Ondo states also in Nigeria. Yeah, so um, keep the name in mind Ijo, Ijo, Izion. Yeah, 
even is not seen there, but sometimes it's, it's spelled I-J-O-N. Like, for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And also, coincidence, yeah, is John, yeah, a ruined city of Natalie. Yeah, this is was well, this was the whole purpose of this video, proving that my tribe is basically a ten lost tribe. I've already proven anyway, but uh, we're gonna go more deeper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to let you know, um, the Africans don't play with their names. You know what I'm saying? We do not play with our names. We're not gonna get names from anywhere. It's not a game for us to have names that have the resemblance of Hebrew names. We're not gonna pick up names from nowhere and then it's a coincidence. It sounds like a Hebrew name. Yeah. A city of Nathalie. Yeah. So they give you the lexicon strongs for it. Yeah. In the Hebrew, uh, like, uh, Eon. You know what I'm saying? Or Eon. Yeah. And you get more of it. Um, H fifty eight fifty six rune uh Ejon, you know what I'm saying, place in Palestine, Ejon, yeah. Um a rune a place in the north of Palestine um belong to the tribe of Natalie. <laughs> yeah. Can you please keep uh Natalie in mind, you know what I'm saying? Because are they gonna go forth? You're gonna understand why am I saying that those people, one, they're related to us, the crew, and two, their name as Natalie. Yeah, so remember Natalie, keep Natalie in mind. Yeah, are they gonna go forth in this investigation? So, one more time, look at it, yeah, and keep it on mind, please. Yeah. So we just checked that the name of the Ijo people are resemblance with the tribe, a uh, city of the tribe of Natalie, which tribe of Natalie, which is a tribe of Israel. Yeah. So let's read a bit more about it. Uh, the more f uh, fanciful account of Ijo history, I've rightly claimed that they originate in ancient Egypt. Before the migrating southward, set settling at Ife, um, Benin, etc. Other claim that the oral derive from South Sudan, from Kush civilizations, uh, came south and formed the the Di Diama society. Uh, yes, society um, around the Lake Chad, and they refer they uh, the reafter. Sorry. Moved south to Benin in Ife. Yeah. So remember what I was saying. Migration through South Arabia. And South Arabia, Sudan and everything. You see what I'm saying. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, Professor Professor um, E.J. Alagoa. Uh, 1972. Gave more descriptive um, pictures of where the Ijo are today in their state of affairs. He tells us that the Ijo are found dispersed along the Nigerian coastlines, especially among the creeks and rivers of Niger Delta. He tells us that the Ijo settled far and wide, wide, yeah, hmm, the Niger Delta, in the eastern side of River Niger, hmm, the western side of River Niger, among the Yorubas, yeah, such as Ondo. And the uh, Apoi and Orobo and Ondo State, yeah, and at the lagoons of Lagos and as far west Ghana and Liberia, the Kuru, the crew basically. So, this is what I was trying to explain to y'all between the Ijo and the crew people. But keep on mind what I was saying about Ijo and Ijon. We're now back in from Babylon to Timbuktu. Mm hmm So I told you to keep in mind Yeah, this thing about um Nathalie, yeah. I told you to keep that in mind. Remember the Ejaw people, the crew and the related stuff that's between them, 
Yeah. Uh, Ejaw, Ejom, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the city of Nathalie. The migration through um, South Arabia, across the Red Sea, all the way through West Africa. Yeah. So let's read a little thing on page 88 again. Yeah. Let's read a little thing about it. It says right here, as I have mentioned earlier, this region that extends across the entire wide of Africa, below, below the, the Sahara this desert, from Senegal to Somaliland, is known as the Sudan or Black Africa. So, <clears throat> you understand that, yeah? Sudan is in Africa. So, let's go to page 92. Speaking of, sorry, speaking of Elder the Danite, yeah? We're going to do a little, 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 little bit about him, yeah? In the 9th century, a black African Hebrew, a black African Hebrew, arrived in the city of Cairo in Algeria. In the city was one of the famous Talmudic school. The name of this Hebrew was Eldad the Danite. He told a credible story of a Hebrew empire south of the Sahara. Hmm, interesting. In the Western Sudan, remember, yeah, that's like 10 times we you heard that today, yeah? <laughs> Alright, according to Eldad the Danite, the Hebrew in the interior of Africa spoke a Phoenician Hebraic language mixed with Arabic. They had a religion which had come down from Moses in a Hebrew em emperor. Mm. It was believed that this emperor was named Plutan or Bulutan. All right, cool. Yeah, that now get more interesting. Yeah, it had said that the people of the of this tribe had fled from the kingdom of Israel after Sinai. Kareem the Assyrian, yeah, as a ref and all that, <laughs> Assyrian has subdued it, mm. yeah, and that other Israelite tribes such as Nathalie, you see, I told you the Ejaw, the city of Nathalie, the crew, and I told you it makes more sense now, Nathalie, God, and Asher were in the land from which he came from. What land did he come from? Western Sudan. And he went to Algeria. So, see what I'm saying? <laughs> now, you have more proof. You have more proof, Natalie. And I showed you about the Ejaw people that they have the resemblance of the name of a city of Natalie, which is Ejaw. You know? <laughs> nah, really. Yeah? And... One thing I want to say, these Hebrew campers, alphabet campers, have this book from Babylon to Ten Book 2, but still they can open up their mouth and say that the Latinos are the Latinos tribe. The Latinos and the Native Americans, Americans are the Latinos tribe, which is nonsense. Yeah? Red of Windsor is telling them, yeah, by the saying of Edda the Danite, that Nathalie, yeah, was in Western... Sudan, in Africa, yeah, Nathalie Gad Asher, in the land which he came from, yeah, so, it makes more sense now, it makes, exactly, it makes more sense, and I got a bit more, and I got a bit more, yeah, uh, let's go to, um, let's go, uh, I'm not going to take too long, yeah, all right, go to page 130, yeah, still in Babylon to turn from Babylon to Mutu. Some scholars have located black jewels within um, the entire Niger River. Mm. Then, the countries in this territory that have contained black African jewels include the following. 
Upper Volta, Ivory Coast. Woo! See, I told you. Ghana, Togo, I think, eh? yeah, or maybe it's a city, Toga. Daome, in Nigeria. Joseph Dupuy, concerning the Jews, in 1824 says, says the lands occupied by these people cover the wide extent between Masina and Kabi. Mm. Masina is located on southern Mali, Mali sorry, yeah, inside the Niger River Band, and Kabi is found in the southern part of Africa, basically where the true people. Yeah, so it started making more sense now. Everything makes more sense now. Yeah, so you understand why. Yeah. I showed you and I'm telling you that my tribe is indeed from Israel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? I've laid evidence. I showed you everything. Yeah? You can't deny it. You know what I'm saying? You can't deny it. Yeah? If you want to uh, debate and say this is not solid evidences, yeah, <clears throat> I don't know what to say to you because the truth is there. Yeah? I have different writers and different books and I make and, and I made the same connection. Mm -hmm. And I even went online and find things that peeps. So if either we all uh plot against you <laughs> or we actually write. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the truth is the, the truth is right here. The truth is right here. And you gotta deal with it. Yeah? You gotta deal with it. In fact, the Hebrew Israelites were Negroes. They are Negroes today. Yeah? The Northern Kingdom of Israel were Negroes. And the Southern Kingdom of Israel were Negroes. But I'm coming soon with a 12 tribe chart exposed. And wow, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah? So stay tuned on my channel. Subscribe, please. And drop some comments as well, yeah? So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, for following me in this walk. Thank you for following me in this investigation. Yeah, thank you for uh, spending time with me. Yeah, listening to me and everything, you know what I'm saying? All I'm trying to do is push this um, truth forward, you know what I'm saying, for our people. And not forgetting the, the coming of a Mashiach, you know what I'm saying? The coming of Mashiach, Yahusha Mashiach, coming of Mashiach very soon, you know what I'm saying? And, and also that the Ruach is going through everybody, you know what I'm saying, on his last day. So thank you very much and Shalom. Shalom.